Welcome to Bible Talk, the midweek Bible conversation from the Alexander City Church of Christ. Thank you for joining us. Now, here are your hosts, Brendan Chance and Andy Graham. Philip may not have been totally thrilled to go into Samaria, um, 
but he goes very well. He is having a successful work. And I know many preachers who have been offered to just make a little bit of a comparison here, offered more money, more prestige, more everything to leave a work that's successful and they turn it all down because a successful work takes effort, time, and it's just flat out hard to leave when things are going well. The Lord sends his angel to Philip. He says, I know things are going well, but I need you to leave. Not only do I need you to leave, I need you to go to the desert. How fruitful of a field would for evangelism would any desert ever be? Not very. <laughs> Not very. And it's just two roads to go on this road through the desert. And the one that he is asked to take is the, the least traveled road. And, and so that's one thing I see about God is God will open doors in ways that we don't see coming. He may ask us to do things that aren't convenient or obvious for us. I mean, let's, let's kind of put that in our terms. Let's say we had a preacher whose church had grown by 100% in the last year. And he up and leaves. We would go, well, that's just crazy. Why would you ever do that? Exactly what's going on here. So we have to have faith that when God asks us to do something that may be contrary to what we see with our own eyes, it's the right thing to do. That's what I saw about God here. I see the same thing I see a lot of times, and it is that God uses people. He wants to use people. This story would have been, I mean, if this is an Old Testament story, the angel would have gone to the eunuch, and he would have told him what he needed to know. Christ has given his life on the cross. The Old Testament is gone. The New Testament has been ushered in. Earth and vessels, earth and vessels we, we're using people. Yeah. Um, the angel doesn't, he sends an angel, but he doesn't go to the eunuch, he goes to Philip. The Holy Spirit moves, but he doesn't move the eunuch. He moves Philip to say, this is what you need to do. So, I mean, you know, the, the whole bit about, you know, you, you got to have a preacher. You got to have somebody to carry the message, and uh, you know he's not talking to Mike McElroy and Brenda Chance, or you know singularly, he's talking to every Christian. You know you are the messengers. You know he's talking about you know he needs messengers. He's not just talking about ministers of you know, congregation. He's talking about every single Christian. It's it's your job to seek and save the lost, and that that's the mission of the gospel. And um, he's looking for messengers. I think that's one of the things I see from God here for sure. Um, I agree. I want to connect that the idea that was mentioned last week in another story about Simon the sorcerer. Here's God's sovereignty again. He's going to bring these two guys on two divergent life paths together. They're going to come together in a desert place. And would we be tempted if something like that happened in our lives to say, well, it just so happened that I was our. What a coincidence. Yeah. I, How lucky. Yeah. Are we God-focused enough to say God in his sovereign might foreknew and worked that out so that these two met on that occasion? And it, can I go ahead and get my other one while I'm here? Go right ahead. I'll pray for you again. No, go ahead. Thank you. Okay. God meets us where we are. God comes to literally, in this case, deliver messenger to the one he wanted to get the message. God meets us where we are. That's ultimately true in the incarnation, isn't it, when Jesus comes where we were. And it's true with this too. That this guy, you know, he's devout, he's looking good. He's doing the very best he knows how to do. God meets him right there and puts the preacher right on the roadside where he can uh, take this opportunity to go through the open question if you guys are. Yeah. All right. Go There's ahead. a lot we learn about people. Yeah. yeah. True. So we believe that people lived a long time ago and these Bible stories were really just human beings like us. What do you learn about people in general? What do you learn about human beings from this story? Wait. Okay, y'all both looked at me. Let's look about let's look at the Ethiopian unit first of all. Uh first of God first of all let's let's kind of get a visual of this man is this is probably a black man uh, from Ethiopia. 
and uh, he is respected. He's wealthy. He's relatively powerful. Yet he knows I don't know everything. He knows I don't have all the answers, and he's seeking God. You're right. God worked to bring all these people together at this one point. But without the Ethiopian eunuch seeking God, it doesn't happen. He had to be doing his part to make that happen too, just like Philip had to leave Samaria to go. And so uh, one thing we see that sometimes people think, I need power, I need influence, I need fame, I need money, I need people to do what I tell them to do, and I'll be happy. And so many times, 10 out of 10, they find out that it's not enough for them. You just look at our country in America, and we're the wealthiest people that ever walk the face of this earth, and we have so many people just looking and searching and wanting something more. They don't know what it is. The difference is the Ethiopian eunuch goes, I know what it is. It's God. And he's, he has procured this scroll with Isaiah 53. And I was doing a little bit of research. It was not cheap to get that. And so many times in our puppet plays and all, we kind of hold a little ratted, uh, little torn up, folded up piece of paper, like he's got a little piece of it, you know. Actually, it's probably a little bit nicer than that. Not everybody could have gotten what he had. And so he's made an actual monetary investment in this also. He is very serious about seeking God. And that's one thing I think we need to see about people, for us to improve, for us to, to fill those holes in our life and our soul and our those gaps that we, we just can't fill with anything else. The need is for people to seek God as much as it is then and it is now. Obviously, you know, this guy was in charge of uh, the whole treasury. Clearly, he was an intelligent person. Um, like you said, he is seeking. He's, he's obviously got a good heart. Um, he's reading, trying to uh, find some truth from the book of Isaiah, but uh, what I know about or what I learn about people is I look at him and he's a smart guy, but he knows he doesn't know it all, like right. you said. Mm-hmm. And when you hear and when you have the opportunity to uh, converse with somebody uh, that is smarter than you are, that knows more information than you do, not necessarily IQ wise, but just they have studied more. They are, um, you know, they just have a better understanding have a different perspective. It's like me sitting here with you two. I can sit here and talk with you, and I I gain more from the conversation, far more than I ever did. So, uh, you know, you two have studied more than I have. So I I learned from that. I take a cue from the Ethiopian eunuch here. He said, do you understand what you're talking about? And instead of being arrogant, of course I do. I have no. (laughs) You know, I don't. Can you help me? Can you help explain it to me? And you know, and I love the fact that this this is one of those things. I don't know what we learn about God or people, but it's just one of those things that he preached unto him Jesus. Amen. I just love that. He didn't, you know, that there's that that's such a mouthful. But he preached unto him Jesus. That's all it needs to be said. And he he picked up everything yeah. he needed from that. Right. That's right. That's right. I like the idea that when humility with this treasure of the gospel who told him the good news about Jesus and he was eager I like that here's some water can I be baptized I I like that and I need to remember that when I think I'm humble when I really think that I'm bowed down and I, I would want to be I would probably be insulted you understand what you're reading I'm, I'm a devout guy. I'm not playing chariot tag bingo going yeah. down the road. I, you know, I'm, I've been on a long trip to go worship in front of a proselyte, and I've got scripture here, and I got it, like you said, at a great price. I need to think of him. I understand what I'm reading. Yeah. I want to think that I'd be humble like that, too. But I guess it gets tested in the opportunity to put into action what I've just been humble about. It comes along. That's the next step in the process. It's having this eagerness that follows the spirit of humility. That's right. When you have this spirit of humility and teachableness combined with Philip, we haven't talked about him too much, is, uh, and, and the people who are here, it's bold. This is, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly. This is 
obviously not just uh, just some random guy going. I mean, I, I'm sure this is royalty. Essentially, it's a member of the court uh, of Ethiopia. And Ethiopia then is a lot bigger than than what it is now, and Queen of Sheba and all that kind of stuff. And and so Philip, nonetheless, he still approaches it. And he approaches it bringing the gospel, and not knowing that inside that is going to be. Oh yeah, I've been. I don't know. I don't know. Help me understand. There could have been a complete rebuke and worse even for Philip. But nonetheless, he's bold to go ahead and, and preach to him. And I think one of the things that we all, I think everybody, you all probably, we all have prayed and do pray for doors to be opened. Uh, I think we pray for that. God opened a door for me to, to help somebody, to influence somebody, to teach somebody. Be careful when you pray that because it might just happen. It might just happen. God might just go, okay, here you go. This seems like a really good example of a door being open. And, you know, praise God, Philip was ready to step through that door. And the eunuch was ready to open it to come in. And we see what happens here. Um, there's a lot more to talk about here. Um, guys, what, what more do you, you all see in this? I, well, just to kind of echo what you were saying, um, I go back and think I, it just came to my mind couple of weeks ago, we were talking about uh, the prodigal son. I mentioned, you know, that I used to think that uh, the most important verse of that scripture was, you know, when he came to himself. But it's actually a little bit after that when it says he got up and went. Yeah, that's right. That's the most important. It's the same thing. Here. You know, Peter, I mean, Philip, uh, an angel comes to him and says, arise, go south. But it's the next sentence that's the most important. So he arose and yeah. went. Um, obedience. That's what um, the other thing that we need to take from this is um, Philip was obedient. The Ethiopian eunuch was obedient. You know, and, and everybody came away better because right. of it. Uh, they were all blessed because of it. Um, there, there's, uh, there's just, uh, I don't know. It, it, that, that's, it sounds so simple, but it's not always easy to live right. That's true. I guess we sort of morphed into the last question. Right. Which mm -hmm. By talking about these things and putting it in first person about us, what, what's my takeaway? The story about this, we know this story well. We can imagine it in our minds. We can sort of picture how it goes. And we're not surprised by the events of the story. What's to take home for folks watching this video or us sitting here talking about this? I think one thing, as a preacher, uh, many of us kind of get hung up sometimes on what we must do for God. Uh, and what we see here is the gospel begins with what God did for us. And that's the good news. The ESV uh, in, that, in, in, in this passage says the good news about Jesus. The gospel is the good news about Jesus that he came and he, he lived and died and was resurrected. And I love that the, like what you said, Andy, that's all that is said. We don't get a detailed Word by word breakdown of this conversation of this Bible study. It'd have been a really good episode of Bible Talk, by the way. Yeah. A really good episode of Bible Talk. Uh, but all we know is that he preached the good news about Jesus, and then lo and behold, they find water, and the guy says, I, I, I need to get baptized. That's that's not a coincidence. There's something in that good news about Jesus that was taught to that man. I need to go down and into the water. We know he was immersed because he goes down and into the water become a Christian and to have his sins washed away and to find the answers that he was looking for, to find that the, what he was seeking. He knew it cultivated with this point. And so that's what I take away here is begin with Jesus. Don't begin with what we must do and let Jesus take us to what we must do. Very good. I, one of the things that I, I guess sometimes I, I've heard people say and I understand why they say it and I guess if you know through experience, uh, different cases, uh, different circumstances, different uh, situations, um, you know, you, you kind of you just want to do what the what's right, what's the best you can. But like you said, I mean, I don't know how long this journey was, I don't know how long this conversation was, but in my mind, you know, it, I get the sense that it took about five minutes for this guy <laughs> to say, "Can I get baptized? <laughs> can I get baptized right now?" It was the and, first water, and, and so, right so I mean. You know, a lot of people will look and, and don't don't squash somebody's eagerness to be converted. 
You know, I mean, I, we always want to say, well, we want to make absolutely sure that they're ready, that they understand. Look, if you preach Jesus to somebody and they're ready to be baptized, just let's, let's do it. It's the same thing with Simon the Sorcerer. He obviously was not perfect exactly. when he was baptized. And, and so, yeah, sometimes we can say, push it off, push it off, push it off. And then, that's a good, great, great point. Right. I think I need to remember, all of us do, something about trusting God's grace when we look at this story and trust that God sees that humble heart. Trust that God keeps that promise that God resists the proud but gives the grace to God. And we see it in, in this story. How God rewarded this treasure with the opportunity, literally of a lifetime, of an eternity, to meet up with a preacher out in the desert and, and hear about Jesus and obey him. And we won't even go into the disappearing preacher thing that happened at the end. Oh, that's so but, cool. we got to talk about it a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> but when he had disappeared, that didn't take one thing away from this fellow's no. joy. Uh-huh. He went on his way rejoicing. And I, I re- I'm reminded when I read this story that I, I've got to give God the credit and the glory for being so gracious to reach out to humble folks and, and realize that he came and met me where I was, that I didn't deserve it, I didn't earn it, I didn't get good enough for it, but the gospel comes out and reaches out to us right where we are in a way that we can receive and understand. And then we receive it with humility and embrace it eagerly. Uh, God's grace will save us absolutely. I love that you, you pointed out. I do want to talk about it because it's one of my favorite things, not to circumvent, because it doesn't really make a point. But I, I love that. And kids, if you're still hanging on, young kids and you like superheroes and, and, and stuff like that, here's here's a, a power that, that would fit in any Marvel movie. Um, they, he, get, he, baptizes him, he baptizes him. They come up out of the water, and Philip's gone. Poof. He morphs. He warp speeds. I don't know exactly how it works. Spirit of the Lord just puts him down in another town. And he was found somewhere else. <laughs> how cool is that? <laughs> By himself. I, mean, I wonder if Philip right. was like, what? <laughs> what? But I love that the Ethiopian eunuch was so wrapped up in what God was doing to him and for him and with him at that moment. Now, like you said, it didn't even phase him. He just keeps on going rejoicing. That's awesome. That's just really cool. Well, guys, if, if y'all don't have anything else to make a point tonight, once again, thank you, Mike, for the last two weeks. I, I really enjoyed appreciate it very it. much. Thank you. And uh, we're going to tie it up tonight. Well, if you have not already, go ahead and click the share button down there under the video. Let somebody else know about our, our conversation tonight. What would be even better than that is if you sit down with your Bible. These two passages that we've done the last two weeks are excellent starting points to helping somebody come to know Christ and, and what they need to do and what he'll do for them. There's not much better for somebody to look at that can make a connection with the eunuch or the sorcerer in, in various ways. So maybe do that this week. Once again, thank you for joining us. Hope you have a good evening. We'll see you either at church, at worship on Sunday, or online again then. Have a good evening.